We've seen all kinds of art here today at Art in the Square. So many things will be great for a Christmas gift. Um, the booth that I'm in now is called Capture to Canvas, and I know that every person out there watching today has a picture that they want to share with someone else. So the idea about uh, Capture to Canvas is one that we're going to tell you about in just a moment, but uh, this is something that you can all do. Joining me now is Rebecca Jonikin, and uh, Rebecca, okay. tell us about the concept for Capture to Canvas. Uh, we started in sports art and we created uh, our unique pieces based on SEC uh, colleges and we did a lot of alumni association events where we raised money for students to go to college, different colleges, but then we um, saw that we had a need in Gainesville for photos to canvas. So you can take your personal photo and we're using it, what process called Jaclay pr printing and a lot of the fine artists in the community will know that process. Um, and we'll put your photo on canvas, we can put it on archival paper, we can put it on a photo paper, we can increase the size, um, we can also um, digitize it, we can paint it. There's so many different applications that we can use for the photo. And if they have an old photo, we can restore it, we can uh, bring it back to life, we can colorize it. There's a lot of options there. Now you said that one of the most popular things that you do would be photos of Lake Lanier, of course. Um, tell us about some of the capture to canvas pieces behind us. Um, these are actually local photographers, uh, John Coltrane and John Lees, that are currently here in this booth, uh, that have taken photos of um, areas that here and around North Georgia, Lake Lanier, War Hill Park, uh, a lot of beautiful waterfalls uh, in the North Georgia mountains. Um, they are great photographers. We will have um, showcases, um, events, exhibitions at our shop uh, hopefully every month showcasing some of the local work and uh, the abilities of the artists here not only photographers but also uh, oil paintings uh, acrylics things like that here's if someone is interested in finding out more about Capture to Canvas, uh, a picture they want to have restored, uh, a memory that they just want to keep forever, how can they get in touch with you? Uh, we're located at 1532 Park Hill Drive, or they can go online at www.capturedtocanvas.com. Uh, they can ask any questions, they can register for our monthly email, they can see some of the processes that are available online, um, just you know, give them ideas, and then come in, call us. 770-531-1175. Uh, uh, we'll be glad to help them. All right, great. Well, thank you so much, and uh, glad to have you here today at Art in the thank Square. You. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. So what's your name? Madison. My name's Claire. What color do you want next? Um, blue. Okay. Art in the Square just keeps getting better and better. We've come into the interior part of the square now. It's nice and cool. It's pretty hot outside today. But what a great day to uh, be in downtown Gainesville and just see all the many artists that we have in our community. We truly are an artist community. Joining me now is Mr. Bill McMahon. He is a wood turner here in the uh, community. Bill, tell us a little bit about the work that you've been doing. Well, I've taken up wood turning uh, four years ago when I retired, and it's a very nice hobby. and gives you a chance to be a little bit creative and and make some nice features that people can use. Tell us about this item that you're holding here. This is actually an urn okay. that if you're cremated, whether you're human or whether you're an animal, that some people like to keep their animals and so you can have them cremated and, and keep them in it. Now one of the things you and I were talking about this just before we started was the fact that you have to, the work that you have to do to hollow that out on it, the it's inside. Hollow, it's hollowed out on the inside. Because this is one solid piece, So it's only it? like a quarter of an inch thick all the way down through here. So that takes a little while to sell Lars to make something like that. But okay, yes. okay. And then I'm holding this uh, tea light candle holder and, and one of the things I really like about this is just the, the uniqueness of the wood and there's there's only one to be one of these, isn't that's, there? That's exactly right. Okay, yes. so here's the candle holder. There's a, there's a lot of different character characteristics to, to some of the wood and some of the wood to grains and you know, it have defects in it, but it make, it puts character into the product. And, and, so. and now what kind of wood do you use? Any kind of wood that I can get locally. This is actually China Berry here that I got here locally. Most of it is oak and a lot of cherry uh, and a lot of maple and so and oak, which we got a lot of oak around the area. Right. So you can make a lot of things out of oak. So you, most of it is locally stuff. I try not use too much exotic woods because it's kind of scarce 
and it's and I'd rather use some of the local woods that we have in the area. So. Okay, so great. So what? Tell me one item that you've been thinking about making, and you just haven't quite got there yet. What, what are you looking forward to making? Uh, you can actually make yes, urns that are, about, are this size right here, and which would take probably a week or so to process to to uh, clear out and, and everything. And so it's. Since I've only been at it four years, it's going to take me a little while okay. to get to get up to a size that, like that right there. But that's 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 my goal. So that's the future. To, that's the future. To for have you. something like this, probably five times bigger. Okay. Okay. So. If um, someone wants to find out more about the items that you have available, how can they get in touch with you? Uh, I've got a. Uh, they can email me at bj mcmahon m c m a h a n at bellsouth.net. Okay. Okay. And uh, it's Bill McMahon at Lula, Georgia. Okay, and you're in Lula. That's right. You're in, in Lula. Lula, Georgia. Yeah. Well, great. Well, it's uh, great to see yet another different type of artist here at Art of the Square. Have you had a good time today? Oh, I've had a great time. It's my second year here, and I, I thoroughly enjoy it. Talked to a lot, met a lot of new people. Met a lot I bet. of people, and it's just a great day, to, great way to spend the day. Well, I tell you what, I'm gonna I'm gonna set this down, and I'm gonna go right next door, and I'm gonna talk to not only is he your neighbor at Art in the Square, he is also your neighbor in Lula, Georgia. Yes, he lives right down the road from me. All right, we're gonna go uh, meet the infamous Phil Fontaine and. Uh, uh, he is the original banjo maker Yes, he here. is. Fantastic. He does some great work. Well, it's so nice to talk to you today and look forward to seeing you again next year at Art in the Square. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. I'm a picking. And I'm a grinning. We're here, of course, at Art in the Square with one and only Phil Fontaine, uh, the banjo master. You heard it yourself. Phil, uh, really great to be here with you. have seen so many people coming through looking at your banjos today and, and um, actually picking some of them up and, and playing it. Tell me how you got into the banjo making business. Well, I got into the banjo making business by uh, being interested in playing. Uh, first banjo is right back here. How old were you? Oh, uh, well, do we have to say that? <laughs> well, that <laughs> no, doesn't tell I how was, old you are today. I was uh, in my early 40s. Okay. And uh, I couldn't afford what I wanted, but I got one that I could get. And having a woodworking background, I decided I could make them, so I just started making them. Okay, and the banjo that you've just played is uh, its a Phil Fontaine original, isn't it? This is an original. It uh, has no detachable resonator. The resonator and the rim are all one piece of wood. Uh, it's unique uh, compared to your, your standard bluegrass banjo. Now let's talk about, you actually made this entire banjo. So yes. for, for people who don't know anything about banjos, we mean the entire banjo. Tell me about some of the other things that you've done here, the carvings. And yeah, there's, uh, the, the banjo is, is glued up and then turned on a, on a lathe. The neck is hand shaped. Uh, the carvings on the uh, on the heel, I do. I do all the carvings. I do all the uh, engraving on the metal parts. I do all the uh, shell inlay work. I make the bridge. All anything that has to do with wood, I make it. And How long did it take you to make this banjo? This one, approximately 250 hours. A lot of time goes into it. Now, is this a full-time job for you, or is this a hobby? That's a hobby. Okay. Okay. So yeah, this is the job on top of the job, isn't this, it? This is the this is the fun. Now tell me about um, tell me about playing the banjo. How how that fulfills you? Uh, I just enjoy the sound of it. I never get tired of hearing a banjo. Well, we certainly have enjoyed meeting you here at Art in the Square today. If someone wants to get in touch with you, if they're interested in a, a, a very special uh, musical instrument like this, how can they get in touch? Uh, six seven eight six one seven eight zero two one. Okay, all right, that is Phil Fontaine. He is, uh, he is the banjo man for sure here at Art in the Square. Why don't you, um, why don't you pick a little more and I'll grin a little okay. more, okay? Yeah.